Was that ner- were you nervous? Did you or did you feel confident in your abilities? Well, of from course, I was nervous. Lot? Yeah, uh, and then you know, for the reason um, I picked and choose the rainy day because uh-huh. you know you don't need a tire. Um, it's more slippery, easy to slide. Mm-hmm. But the flip side is it's hard to stop. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. And if you know how life goes, then you know how important insurance can be. We pay hundreds of dollars a year to protect our homes, our cars, even our phones and electronics. But too many of us aren't taking the steps to protect our families finances. Mortgage payments, private student loans, and other types of debt don't just disappear if something happens to you. A life insurance policy can provide your loved ones with a financial cushion they can use to cover the costs, and it can provide you with peace of mind that even in a worst-case scenario, they'll be protected. And if you already have coverage through work, that's good, but having life insurance through your job may not be enough most people need up to 10 times more coverage to properly provide for their families and coverage through work isn't portable if you leave your job the policy doesn't go with you meaning a gap in coverage when you need it the most and inflation is driving up prices right for just about everything right but life insurance rates are actually down from this time last year and since life insurance typically gets more expensive as you age that means now is a great time to buy by making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for the coverage that you need. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price on insurance. And you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 per month for $500,000 worth of coverage. So just click the link in the description, head over to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance company, so they're on hand throughout the entire process to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Policy Genius doesn't add extra fees. They don't sell your information to third parties. They have thousands of five star reviews across Google and Trustpilot, and they've helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over $150 billion in coverage. So head over to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. We're also brought to you in part today by Off the Record. Off the Record is an amazing service that works for you, helping prevent unnecessary fees, fines, and insurance rate hikes when you get a ticket. It is a team of people that can recommend and connect you directly with a qualified lawyer wherever you get a ticket who will fight that ticket on your behalf and keep those points off your record. They have an amazing success rate. They have... Uh, coverage in 97% of the areas where people live and where they drive, and they will ensure that you don't have to go to court wasting time, wasting money, missing work to fight a ticket. This ecosystem of fines and fees and insurance rate hikes is a racket, folks, and you want to stay out of it. Trust me, it's terrible. I have been there. Off the record works for you to get these points off of your record, saving you time, saving you money, saving you headaches, and just making your life better in general. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or download the Off the Record app and use code TST10 on that app. 10% off Off the Record services for life. It's great stuff, folks. Offtherecord.com slash TST or code TST10 on the Off The Record app. Get it now. Make an account now. That way it's there when you need it and you don't have to worry and panic when you get pulled over. You've got a team working for you at Off The Record. 
All right, folks, on today's show, legendary driver Dai Yoshihara is in studio. This dude has done drifting, he's done time attack, he's done sprint racing, he's done endurance racing, he's been all over the place, and his story is super interesting. Uh, he did a show uh, with Zach, and Zach would regularly tell me, like, Dai was the coolest, and we should have him on the show. We saw him just kill at Pike's Peak. And we took our opportunity to invite him down, and we have a great talk today. It's driver Dai Yoshihara on the Smoking Tire Podcast. All right. So don't worry about like a weird intro or anything. I record okay. that shit later. Thanks for coming down, though. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate it. We seem to run into each other at, at all these interesting places, but only for a few minutes. Right. To say hi. And yeah. <laughs> GTR day at Willow Springs yep. uh, with the Built by Legends car. That was so cool. I know. Did you drive it? Yeah. A bunch, right? Well, yeah. Was it awesome? That was great. So yeah. how many different GTRs have you driven? A lot? A lot. I would say a lot, yeah. How would that one uh, stack up in terms of all the GTRs that you've driven? I would say number one, for you sure. You think so? Yeah. I mean, not... The power, though, just yeah. the overall balance. Yeah, that's like by far the amazing, amazing R32. I was when they told me the price, I was like, mm. "Wow!" Yeah, but then I drove it, and I went, "You know what? It actually is the best one." Yep. I think exactly what I felt too. It was just like so light and really nicely set up. Everything was kind of like in harmony, right? Yep. They, guys, they seem well the whole car, right? Or a bunch of it. They like don't seem points. well the whole I, car. I think they spot think just, welded. Yeah, it just uh, the, you know the certain spots. Okay. Yeah, that's what they kind of calculate. Okay, where to make it stiff and where to not. So, and then they take they replace certain panels with carbon, but only the high up ones, the roof, the trunk, the hood, to so keep the weight down low. I think it might be under three thousand pounds. I think they well, said it was under I three thousand pounds. Think around there. It's pretty close. Yeah. They might have to do some trickery. It's like with no <laughs> fuel, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. But. The McLaren measurement. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the motor cool. trend. Yeah, <laughs> McLaren uh, sends press cars with like no air no conditioning gas. and no gas like, <laughs> to the scales. Yeah, um, but it was so like fluid and nice. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite uh, generation of Skyline? Actually, I like R32 the best. You do? Yeah, as far as the that looks. Mm. Yeah, just because it's so cool. It's I clean. Mean, yeah. I think I'm a 34 man myself. Oh wow! You're a little Just bit I like sixth gear. I like yeah. the sixth gear a lot. <laughs> Zach, Zach got to have a go in a 34 yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's fucking great. Oh, I saw your Instagram. It's so yeah. good. So so good. To, to go back to the mines thing, I know the price was like a, a point of contention for a lot of people, but um, like if you have an R34, you can give it back to the factory, and they'll and there's a package you can basically order where they take the whole car apart, seam weld it, build you an engine, and I that think it's more. It's two hundred grand. Yeah, and it's mm. not, not including car. the car. Plus your car, <laughs> right? So yeah, right, it, it yeah. justifies. It, it puts in perspective. Um, mines is cost. Well, yeah, it, that kind of work takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. A lot, yeah, of, a lot of like consuming. really skilled people doing a lot of you know a lot of time. And they told me you know that car was white, but. The paint was sixty thousand dollars. It was sixty thousand dollars of white, <laughs> like it had sparkle. It was you know, but like that. Well, that's where that's a lot. Of, that's a big chunk. Yeah, Porsche <laughs> yeah. is jealous of that pricing. Yeah, sixty thousand. Wow. wow. Yeah, they painted a lot. <laughs> it's a wow. lot. It's a lot of, <laughs> and when you have the the mixed materials, you know, you've got aluminum and carbon, and right, da, da, right. so you, to to match all that, it's a slightly different you know mm. formula. Yeah. When you were back, when you were. In Japan, driving, yeah, professionally, professionally, yeah, or 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 Whoa. or on the street, okay. or being crazy <laughs> on the toge, well, you know, whatever. Yeah, what was like? What was the cars that really stood out to you then? Uh, so I actually became a professional in the states only. So when I was living in Japan, uh, you know, my driving days were, you know, like a toge mm -hmm. stuff. So I still love the A eighty six the best. Still till, till so light till, till now, yeah. Yeah. Do you have one today? Do you I, still have one? I do. Yeah. Is it fr is it a right hand or left hand drive car? I have a left hand drive. Okay. Yeah. Does it is it a crazy built one or is it kind of uh, original? Or? I have a one with the FK8 engine. Okay. It's kind of crazy built. Uh huh. And I have another one with just a street version, which is like very light tuned. Uh huh. Um, They're the best. Yeah. They're so fun. <laughs> they just don't weigh anything. Right. In when you know, because we've seen those videos from Japan of people just being crazy on the togays. Yeah, is there? What is the like? 
enforcement like over there with like police and stuff like that? Does anyone ever get in trouble doing that <laughs> stuff? I mean, it's obviously dangerous. Yeah. And you can't encourage people to do it. But, we should not. But, you know, here you could get in a ton of trouble for doing that kind of right. stuff. Is that the same over there or not really? I don't think it's the same. I think it's getting harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Like compared to my days where like 20 years ago, it wasn't yeah. easy. Maybe I shouldn't say this uh, on you know public, but you know I, I run away many times, yeah. right? <laughs> that kind of situation. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays I think a lot more strict, but still compared to the U.S. side, yeah, like you you get a helicopter, yeah. you get guns and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. It's a little bit different, yeah. But at the same time, I think people in Japan are really doing more. Uh, uh, countryside, mm -hmm. like not the many like uh, traffics or like, any people living around there. So, not a, every time, but yeah, it looks like those are the places still kind of going on. Yeah. So yeah. Once you get, it's a little more like kind of hard line between like dense in the city and then 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 the more remote, right? Right, right. Yeah, it gets remote quickly. When you, when you were doing it back then, was it all about oh, drifting or was it about? like racing up the mountain like how did how did that work um there was a racing kind of people too but i was just fully only drifting okay yeah what age did that start at when i was 18 which was 96 okay end of 90s yeah to yeah. like early 2000s yeah we're about the same age do you you really do a good uh you really jump back and forth between the drifting and the racing time attack style very well nowadays yes yeah which do you think you do better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, compared to other people, you mean? No, I just, I mean, in your own personal skill set, you know, do you do you think you're better at finding the limit mm. at, at speed, or do you think you're better at, you know, sending it backwards? Well, so I started with drifting, mm. and I didn't really start grip driving till maybe like 10, 15 years ago, maybe 12 years ago. So grip driving is still kind of new to me, and kind of still excite me more than drifting in a way because I've been doing drifting more than like over 20 years. Yeah. Um, so I can't really pick and choose. I love both and, but still like my skill was coming from drifting. So I will say I do better on drifting still. Do you think that being good at drifting helps you become a better grip driver? Because um, you're so, you're used to being calm when the car is out of sorts? Yes, uh, yeah. yes, definitely it helps. Yeah. But at the same time, it's uh, it um, it's opposite too. If you're into drifting too much and you never had a grip driving experience, for me, like in in the beginning, it was really hard for me to transfer because mm -hmm. it's very different, right? I think the skill is really helpful to know how to drift. But if you're used to drifting too much, you kind of have to change the mentality. You know. Yeah. Like a turning always turn like turning into the turn, uh, I was like turning way too early, <laughs> yeah. you know, and carrying way too much speed. And yeah, yeah. Stuff like that, like just a, you know, natural habit, yeah. You have to adjust like your strategy for a corner, right? right? And everything else, yeah, wow. So I think at that point, like if you need to know the, the knowledge about how to drive, mm -hmm. and then if you have a skill, maybe you can adjust from there. Yeah. Yeah. I've from going from grip to I'm not very good at drifting, but I've done it a, f a few times and I really really like it. It's really <laughs> fun. But you know, if you've never done it and you're trying to get every 10th, you know, in a in a grip drive, yeah. If you get out of sorts, you have that half a second of panic <laughs> that I think you don't have, you know, if you're used to, to sliding the car anyway, it just becomes so so natural. I think that's why a lot of the, the drifters find success when they go to grip, because it's easier to reprogram the mm. mind than it is to teach your body to react to massive oversteer. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. We're so used to getting in sideways, so we don't get... Panic. It's not weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that your hotch? Is that your uh, your hotchy? Yeah, that's the crazier build. That one. thing is awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's cool as hell. We're up on uh, Dai Yoshihara on Instagram. No punctuation. Like, follow, subscribe. All those things. Thank you. Yeah, that's that thing is fucking cool. And I imagine the street car is not like a wide body. Like no, that. no, it's straight. Yeah, yeah. Were you like, um, man? How was that way? This it's one, I be, never like, wait, but I think twenty. Three to twenty-five. Wow! That, yeah, yeah, see, I that's think. awesome. I, yeah. Is it important to have naturally aspirated motor with one of these? I would say so, but this one has a FK8 Type R engine, which is oh, a that's turbo. the current Civic Type R yes, engine. Yes. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. I bet that rips. 
Is that just a to- I bet with a totally stock Civic Type R engine in that, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that was the whole point. Uh, I want to get upgrade, but I didn't want to make it like unreliable car. Mm. So just put the stock FK engine. So hopefully I don't have to, you know, dig with it. Yeah, yeah. This car just keeps driving. Well, in that car, that's like so much power. Right, right. Yeah. 300 horses is enough for this. That must yeah, be so it's got to be. It's got to be amazing. Yeah, yeah. What gear do you use? The original gearbox or a more modern? Um, using the S2000, S2000 yeah. gearbox. So it's the shifter feels like perfect. Yeah, too. that's gotta be feels awesome. Great. Who built that for you, or do you, or do you do it? No, I don't. Yeah, I, uh, I manage, but I don't uh-huh. really wrench myself. I like, um, see, I like that thought. That's <laughs> yeah. what I, do. I manage as well. <laughs> manage is a real kind way to say I write the checks. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, I have my guy Chris uh, Ima who does, uh, who did a. Uh, um, uh, crew chief for my my drifting oh cool um excellent last five six years yeah. that's lovely that car down at um a, f- a guy i a guy i know down at uh, evasive uh, motorsports is uh putting a that civic type r engine in a oh, uh, yeah, s2000 yeah, yeah. you might gonna drive it i'd like to drive okay, it okay that'd be i'd dope. like to drive it yeah. yeah it looks like a very cool build that one looks great it's gonna be and it's that integra that championship white yep. it's really really cool that thing is awesome those yep. guys do good work down shout out to evasive so i saw you at uh at pike's peak for like two seconds <laughs> driving the tesla model three yep uh with the evasive guys actually they were they your support crew for that or was it just you just borrow their trailer <laughs> <laughs> no no no, no. They're, they're the team that's awesome yeah and you did so well I mean, I think, did you Thank go you. first or second up the hill for the whole day? <laughs> uh, it was, was early, like, right? Uh, day, like within like a 10. It was early in the day. Yeah. yeah. And you put up, uh, this. the car was real crazy. Massive downforce. The wing looks like it's off a Senna. Swan neck wing. What is that? What's going on on the rear rear tire there? It just, uh, what just do you a, call that? Uh, like heat extraction? Oh, that's the thing? tire like, blanket. Is it a tire blanket? Oh no, it's uh no, it, it's not. It's just uh, wheels with uh, some uh, spinner thing on top. So that's a uh, aero disc. Oh oh like the really? Rally cover oh. thing. Right. Oh, it's just a funky wheel cover. I didn't <laughs> see that. The car may have been on like roller wheels when I saw it before you went up or something. But mm. um, driving an EV on a hill climb. One of the th- toughest things I've found is judging corner entry speed in an mm. EV because you don't, it's not like third gear, 5,000 RPM or something. How did you find doing hill climb in an EV? Yeah, I guess that's one of the things like you kind of have to get used to. You don't have a shifting, you don't have a sound. Yeah. But I, I, I didn't have really, you know, long time to get used to it. Um, just uh, the different rhythm, but no issues for that for me. You just need to spend a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, other than that, it's the same as a gas car. Uh, people think EV doesn't really affect by the altitude, which is true. But uh, for Tesla, at least, uh, as you go higher on the mountain, your battery is drained, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't get the power. Mm. So your power is always not uh, max. Right. It's so always, it's dra- it goes down for other reasons than right. are not the altitude, right? So that was uh, the and battle we Heat's a big having. issue, too, right? Because right, the air right. gets thinner, so you you don't get as much, uh, your radiators or heat exchangers aren't as effective. Exactly. And then the Tesla batteries heat up a lot. Right. Yeah. yeah. How did you deal with the fog? It was hard. Yeah? It was the hardest thing I ever felt. <laughs> really? Just not, you just, because how much of it could you do from memory and how much did you need to do from sight? Oh, uh, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't really do it. So at the end of the day, like, I was going f- as fast as I can, but always, like, you know, leaving the the room Mm -hmm. if I see something, right? Yeah. So always my foot, left foot was on the brake and then like anytime I can push it kind of situation. Just ready, yeah. Did the car have factory defogger, windscreen defogger? No, but uh, (laughs) it was fine. I didn't have, yeah, I know the black guys had an issue. Yeah, Randy's car was struggling. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's the reason why we got better time because I never had any issue with the windshield. Yeah, you you beat them in a, in a quote, slower car, didn't you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's that was our first time uh, going. It was an incredible oh, thing right? to watch. How many times have you raced it? That was my first time. Oh, really? Yeah. And what were, what did you drive previously? Uh, a uh, Toyota GD86. Oh, okay. Yeah. With, with a two JZ. Oh, there you go. I was gonna say with with what kind of massive power? <laughs> it's yeah. Crazy. How much power did it make when we were testing like a button? Like seven fifty eight hundred. Oh, that's probably yeah. Good. Yeah, that at probably the wheels. goes pretty at good. At the wheels, right. yeah. Yeah. 
That doesn't weigh anything either, probably, right? No, no that was a pretty heavy car, actually. Really? Yeah. The was car it wa- real fun to drive, though? It was kind of sketchy to drive, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah. It's very tail happy, and on the mountain, you don't want that, right? Well, yeah. That, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that car had ran a number of events before you guys started using it for Pikes Peak, right? Wasn't it a former um, FD car or something? Not a FD car. They, uh, it was the uh, SEMA build to begin with. Uh-oh. So the car wasn't built for the race car. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know exactly what so you mean. So the way <laughs> and the body build wasn't really uh, planned to be a race car. Right. And then, Probably looked great on camera, though. Yeah, it looks great. awesome in photos. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds great, too. Uh, and then someone drove Pikes Peak maybe twice before I did. Mm-hmm. And then we, I mean, they upgrade uh, the whole thing, and then we try it again. And wait, did you use it for three years? You said you ran Pikes Peak four times. So one was the Tesla, two, two or two those, were in the eighty-six. Yeah, so I tried two. Um, fourth oh, year, two failed. Teslas. Yeah, we had a mechanical issue. Um, the dev blew up, um, so couldn't finish. Mm-hmm. And then the second year, we won the class, which was great. Oh yeah, there you um, go. So, what is it about that race that keeps you? Going. Everyone says if you do it once, it's just like yeah. instant, you know, addiction. So, what is it about that race that just keeps you going back? There's a lot of reasons, but I think main thing is I never feel like that was the fastest that I could do. Because mm-hmm. you only get one chance in a year, right? Yeah. There's only uh, one time a year you can do full length. Like the, there is a practice, but it's always divided by yeah, the it's a third, and you're missing the gaps in the middle right. too. Yeah. So. Only, I only did, and then you know, a couple of years ago, the the weather was not great, so I only had like a three times try in my in my career, right? And of course, it's not perfect. Like next yeah. year will be a little bit better, and year year after will be a little bit better. So it's like you know, I want to keep trying the best and go as fast as possible, kind of thing. So is it more important for you to beat yourself than to beat anybody else or win a podium or anything like that? I think so. Yeah. Especially, you know, uh, everybody has a different cars, right? Right. So it's a very different type of race, I think. Why isn't there an EV class yet? It seems like there's enough yeah. of them at this point. There should be, right? Yeah, you're it's right. Weird. Is it, were you running in that exhibition or whatever it's called? Is that what it's exhibition the class? Exhibition, yeah. Yeah. They should just make an EV <laughs> class at this point. It seems yeah, like we, there's enough. Yeah. We claim like we are the fastest EV, but there's no such thing. Like you said, there, if there's a class, that'd be great. Someone's going to show up with the Rimats and just <laughs> fucking destroy it. I just drove that thing. It's like oh, 2,000 yeah? horsepower. It's so crazy. Wow. So crazy. It's, I mean, just, it's 8.5 in the quarter mile on street tires over wow. and over. Like, okay. 8.5? At 161 miles oh an hour gosh. in the quarter mile. Yeah, it's a street car. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Silent street car. Wow. wow look at that thing. Ah. Oh, this one. Yeah. The uh, like the teal one on the left is the one I drove. That, mm. uh, it's like it's the color of like a 1993 Mustang GT. It's brilliant. It's like the color that all American cars were in 1993. I love it. Nice. So let's go back to the let's go back to the beginning. What what first got you into driving toge and that kind of stuff? Were you oh. a little kid reading the <laughs> magazines? Was it seeing videos like VHS? What was it? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I always liked car when I was a kid. Um, I was actually riding a motorcycle be- before. Motorcycle first? Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of motorcycle? It was called uh, Suzuki Bandit. Oh, yeah. You know, I know what the, it is? Yeah, I know the Bandit. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Okay. Not that many people know. Oh, know yeah, no. I know I know bikes a little bit. I know the Bandit. <laughs> Suzuki. Yeah, they're cool. Cool. Yeah. Was it like super 90s? Like super crazy 90s. 90s colored yeah, one? Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Dude, the, uh, the Japanese were making the craziest colored motorcycles in the 90s. Right? All the color schemes were nuts. <laughs> Kawasaki, I think, was the winner. Theirs there's were like nuclear waste green and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you started with a bandit. Okay, those are fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I was riding on the, the mountain road one mm-hmm. day, and then I saw cars drifting. So from that day, I'm like, okay, when I get a driver's license. So in Japan, you can get the, the driver's license uh, you cannot get driver's license till 18 years mm-hmm. old, but you can get a motorcycle license uh, when you get 16. Oh. So that two years, everybody just ride motorcycle. It's an interesting um, law, isn't it? <laughs> so it's weird where they have, they've come up with that one. I guess is that because in the more rural areas, it's like how people get around? I think so. Or is it for like mopeds in the city, do you think more? 
Oh, you mean like a motorcycle or the moped? Like, yeah, why they let the younger kids get, the, get it earlier. I think the car in, in the end, uh, it's more bigger. Like, mm. it could kill people, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I it's, I mean motorcycle <laughs> is You could just kill yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I think it's safer it's good, for other people. That's, see, that's a good philosophy. We could adopt that in America. In two years, inspired. you can get more yeah. mature enough. And in can, America, it should be motorcycle <laughs> at 16, car at 18, Escalade at 28. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, you, know, like you, can't, you can't drive a Super Duty until you're 35 and have kids. Like, <laughs> that makes sense? No. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now, so now you go. Okay, I need to get a, I need to get a drift car. So you turn yeah. eighteen, and you go straight to the Hachi. Yes, yeah, straight okay. to the Hachi. Um, I had a friend who's a little bit older, who had me the deal. I got the eighty six, was drift ready for two hundred bucks. Fuck yeah! It's like a, you know, differential and then shocks in it. Did what? it have an engine? Was it? Yeah, everything was ready. Yeah, <laughs> really? It, it was the nicest condition, but those days are over. Two hundred dollars. Yeah, you're not you're time? not getting a fucking Hachi dashboard for two hundred bucks today. <laughs> Seriously, right? Wow, yeah. Yeah. that rules. Welded diff. Or well, like a real it was diff. actually TRD. Uh, oh, it was real diff. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. The, the, so. the diff is five hundred. Here we go. <laughs> so That's first awesome. time you go out, do you go to like? Like, are you in with a group that knows how to do this? And they say, all right, you need to start in a parking lot. Cause we, like, we talked right, to Hurt, and right. they were like, you have to go around this cone first. Or did you go up to the mountain, and you try to figure it out? Like, how does that in education work? Exactly what you say. So I had a group of friends who already started. Uh, and then they told me to do on the parking lot, which was like a bass lottery, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so just at night, nobody's around, and just go there, and then just start from the uh, figure, not figure eight, the... Uh, the donuts, donuts, yeah. And then, you know, once you become okay and make your donuts bigger, and the next step is figure eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just this is basically over what, it's what Drift 101 This is. is what Drift 101 is. Like, literally, <laughs> yeah. this is exactly what Naoki's doing at Drift 101. It's like that's the right, same yeah. exact thing. Was he there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds right. I'm pretty sure he, you know, yeah. went through that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what were, what were other people driving? Was it like 240s and stuff as well? Or was it yeah. not? Were those too new at the time? No, no, still already uh, S13, S14s are not. I mean, S14 was still expensive, but S13 was cheap. Mm -hmm. R32 Skyline Type M, mm -hmm. those kind of cars. R32 Skyline, oh. yeah. The rear wheel drive Skyline. Yeah. They're still affordable. Non GTRs you could are still pretty affordable, yeah, it was actually. Crazy, though, compared to that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, they were like nothing for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. a couple, couple thousand, and that was great condition at the time. Yeah, but. we're trying to get Zach in like an R33 sedan, Ooh. like a GTST. I like them, man. I, I, like, I daily, do. Daily, daily driver Some status. RB engine, but four doors. Yeah. yeah. It's like a slightly more reliable, you know, BMW sedan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I hope. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> mm, Maybe. <laughs> and then when you first got on, went from the parking lot to the mountain. Yeah. Um, was that ner were you nervous? Did you or did you feel confident in your abilities? Well, of course, I was lot? nervous. Yeah, uh, and then you know, for the reason um, I pick and choose the rainy day because uh -huh. you know you don't need a tire. Um, it's more slippery, easy to slide. Mm -hmm. But the flip side is it's hard to stop. So <laughs> 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 of course I crashed. Oh, did you? Did you have a big one or a little one? No, no, a little one. Okay. So pretty much I remember every time I go out, I you know I hit the guardrail once or twice every night. Mm -hmm. every so night. the car was uh, yeah pretty true. So were you? Is it, was that just what people did? It's like look, this is your education is going to require a cheap car that's somewhat disposable. Yeah. And everyone just kind of accepts that. Not everybody, though. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people, a lot of friends who likes to have a nice car and yeah. nice parts. They don't really drift that well. But I didn't care about how that looked. I just wanted to... You wanted to be good at it. Yeah, I wanted wow. to just drive. Okay. So. The best drivers are not the best car collectors. You know, maybe you're everyone right. we, we've talked to who like like hurt, you know, really just he loves driving. He doesn't even really care that much about the car. Yeah. And like we haven't had him on the show, but I know I know Ken Block a little bit. And like he doesn't even really like cars like he ha he needs them to do <laughs> yeah. what he does. But he likes going real fast mm. and making, going vroom vroom and fucking sending it. He doesn't even really care that much. He tried to collect cars and it didn't work. Remember, he got that RS 200. It was like amazing. Mm -hmm. And then after like six months, he's like, yeah, maybe not. Because like, what am I going to do? <laughs> Send this thing up fucking Pike's Peak? Like, no. And he's just like, you have to kind of not care about the car itself, huh? I, I'm totally that way, too. Yeah? Yeah. Non-precious. Well, car I like cars, them. but I like to drive cars more than 
mm-hmm. you know, just looking at it or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When you were, when you were doing that, um, you know, when you were younger, did you, what was your like dream build then? Was it always the, the mm. Hachi or were you like one day I'm going to have a R34 rear wheel drive <laughs> GTR? I guess I wasn't the car corrector type of guy mm-hmm. to begin with, so I never really had that kind of thing. Just whatever the tool mm. for the job was. So, I mean, I still like cars, and I I guess I wanted to have, uh, at the time, was a JZX100. Oh, yeah, Chaser. Chaser, Chaser. or Mark II, those cars, yeah. I wanted to buy one because that was so expensive back then. Yeah. Because it was like a brand new generation, so like twenty five to 30000 mm-hmm. uh, Those are really cool. Yeah. I had a go in one of those. It was like tuned. It was really, really right? nice. Yeah, it was cool as hell. It was great. It was like a Supra. Like, yep. it was like a Supra with a Lexus interior, but it looked like a Camry on the outside. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> it was really wild. Right. Love those cars. Didn't someone who just got one of those? Was it Hurt? I think Hurt yeah, got he did. one. Yeah, yeah, right. Got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're cool. Are they? Are they? They they got cheap and now they're kind of expensive again, right? right? Expensive yeah, again. But they're good. Like, good sleeper. Yeah, for sure. Right. So I guess, yeah, that was a car. But mm-hmm. I didn't really think about, you know, how to modify or anything, just as it is, and yeah. just wanted to drive. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And did you eventually kill that car? Or did, did, did you <laughs> get $200 for it from someone else? <laughs> no. Oh, you mean uh, the, the 86? The yeah. 86, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I didn't kill it. I actually sold to my friend, and I got another car. Okay. Yeah. What was the next one? It's called Nissan Loro. Oh, yeah. You know that? Yeah, definitely. It's another sedan. Uh-huh. I wanted to buy a ZDX100, but too expensive, right? Yeah. So I got the Loro for like five grand. We got Laurels here, uh, but as an Infinity. I'm pretty sure it was the M... I think the Laurel was the M30 here in the U.S. No, that's... Oh, the uh, I-30. I think it was the I-30. That, that one is a uh, Sephiro Oh, in yeah, Japan. right. You're it's right. It's pretty much the same car, but... Uh, Can you get the Nissan <laughs> Laurel photo? I, for, I forget what they look like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Right. We never um, got that one exactly. Um, yeah, you guys don't have it. The Maxima was similar, but it was front-wheel drive. Right. <laughs> yeah, similar body. Yeah, was yours like the '80s one or the nine or like uh, the '90s one, like that um, one? The uh, that one on the yeah, it's a C33. C33, yeah, yeah. five-speed turbo. That one in that photo that looks is, like it, real it, clean. That's a very <laughs> unassuming shape, though. Like, I, right? it just it looks like any kind of '90s sedan. Well, and that's why you got to put the body kit and yeah. the VIP wheels on it. The stance. <laughs> Yeah, right. I love that car too. Wow. Like you see the red one or the pink one at the bottom. It looks oh, yeah. great, right? Oh, that looks nice. Oh yeah. Okay. And this comes with RB20 turbo. Uh huh. Um, and then you just need to like swap the uh, stick shift. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, they were automatic from factory. You know what? I I think they had the stock manual too, but it only comes with the uh, uh, twin cam engine, not oh, the turbo. Okay. Oh, so you got to mix and match the, the right. parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Those are pretty cool. But did that that must have felt huge after the Hachi though. That must <laughs> yeah. have felt like the giant car. Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. But it was actually easier to drift because more power, uh-huh. more wheelbase, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you you can get more angle. Mm-hmm. And you don't get like spins out easily. Yeah. So like learning from Hachi was really helped and this put me into another level of driver sure. after that. Yeah. So the Hachi probably helped your reaction time because that short lever and wheelbase, yeah. right? You got really good at those precise things, and then with the long one, it's so much easier. Right. Okay. You you can kind of pick and choose when to like transition and all that stuff. And also the Hachi hardest thing was no power. Like right. I would say maybe like 80, 90 holes to the wheel, or whatever. Wow. So yeah, you have to commit it. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. With the turbo cars, do you do you now now that you have more experience? Do you prefer like a turbo power band or like naturally aspirated? Like do you like V eight? What do you what do you like? I when think NA is always the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, unless the power band is like super high or something like right. a NASCAR power or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but turbo is always easy. I mean, as long as you're putting the power you band, you gotta spool it in. Yeah, yeah. And then like yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, have you ever have you ever done like a car with like a big V8 or something like that, like drift a car like that? Yeah, yeah. Those are pretty, they're about as easy as it Yeah, that's too, yeah. Any gear. Response. Just, yeah. yeah. So at, what did you have after this Laurel? Did the Laurel survive, more Laurel important? Laurel survived maybe did. a couple of years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I switched to Sephiro because the Laurel body got pretty messed up. Mm-hmm. Which is, Was uh, this also like just your car? 
My was this car. Is, this was your everyday, all the time yeah, car. Yeah, also. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Everyday car. Man, it's tough. My man Adam, who you met downstairs, who yeah. works for us. Do you see? He's got his two forty downstairs, and that's his everyday car oh. and his drift car. And it is, it is that is a tough thing. <laughs> well, no, he has a Mazda three also. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I don't see it very oh, often. You know, I don't because he, he drives the two forty a lot. He chooses to drive the yeah. drift car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I suppose he could still get to work if he broke it. That's a good point. For a, but before he got that Mazda three though, he was drifting yep. that two forty. Mm. And and I was like, he's like, I'm going to the track this week, and I'm like, are you gonna make it to work tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're gonna be stranded at Apple Valley, bro. Oh, oh the Sephiros. See, those yeah, are that's cool. Good. That's exactly the same. It kind of looks like an S13 yeah? coupe, you know, yeah. but with just an extra door. I like it. And it was it, those were of an of a quality that we got them as Infinities, and they were called luxury cars when they got here. Like that one on the top left. That's like that was the one we got. Right, right. And uh, that's a different generation. I think. Yeah, it's a second generation yeah. car. But uh, so this one is yeah. the one I had, and it's pretty much identical everything as the C thirty three Rolo, mm -hmm. even though it looks totally different. Mm -hmm. So I can use all the same parts, just swap the parts, and just I got this car for like maybe a couple grand. And nice. Now, so it's RV twenty. RV twenty turbo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those Ooh. things are cool. And they f they fly under the radar too. Yeah, yeah, I dig. So now you've done this for a couple of years. You're on your third drift car. At what mm -hmm. point did you go? I could probably compete. <laughs> when I when you go, I, I want to see if I'm better at this than somebody else, and not just having fun. Actually, I never thought I was gonna compete, or I wanted to uh, try to be a professional driver or anything. I was just doing it as a hobby for mm -hmm. a long time. Maybe after three car. After that, um, I just uh, met the guy from the States uh, who was visiting for some car show in Japan. Mm -hmm. And this guy named Ken Miyoshi, uh, who used to do import car uh, import show off. I don't know if you know about it. I don't this. know that one, no. It's like a hot import night, import okay. show off, like one of those shows. Mm -hmm. um, but he was saying, oh, maybe the like, next thing will be drifting in the States. and. Um, he wanted to see the drift scene in Japan, so I took him to uh, Japanese mountain and show him, you know, what the drifting is in Japan. That must have been crazy for him. Yeah, he must he, have been like, oh, this <laughs> is the thing. Right. Yeah. So he was amazed, and then um, he went back to the states, and maybe six months after, he's like, oh, I'm gonna try to do some event, drifting, drifting event in the mm -hmm. states, and he invited me to come over. Oh, cool. So that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Who else was at that event? Anybody that we would remember? Uh, RJ De Vera. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It's called uh, Close Five. So that at the, that's the time the Fast and Furious was popping in Japan. The first generation one, like uh -huh. 2002 or something. Yeah. So they had a sports. It's called Spokon Culture. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a show in Japan, right? And then uh, RJ and Kim Miyoshi was visiting, and even RJ's mom was there too. Oh shoot! Oh <laughs> dude, look at that photo. <laughs> that hair. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> so how old were you? Uh, 2004, this was what you were? 2004, uh, 20, 20, be like 26 or something. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that picture is great. Dude. So this is amazing because you, you literally met like a guy at a car show who, how had he heard about drifting? And then you went and like brought him to the scene and then you drove well enough. He went, do you want to compete? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Wow. I don't know how to explain, but That's yeah, pretty cool. That did he provide you a car, or did he bring a car for he you? He did, actually. He did? Yeah. Was it a nice car? It was an S13. Oh, okay. Com coming from the car show, so it wasn't great for the drifting. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do a lot of modification oh, afterwards. Sounds familiar. It was a seam of Right, <laughs> right, pretty much. <laughs> That's funny. And was it left-hand drive as it well? It was left-hand drive. So and that had was you any experience with left-hand drive at all? No, I didn't. How'd I didn't that have, go? It was hard. <laughs> it took me a while to get used to. Yeah, it's tricky. Especially e-brake. You know? Right. Yeah, the e-brake with the other hand is an yeah. interesting one. I've, I've, I've had enough practice doing both, but I, I tested a right-hand drive drift car a couple times. One was a Hachi and one was a Sylvia, oh. and both were a little, required some some mental preparation, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine trying to compete, just drive, diving into that and trying to right. really compete. It was tough. Yeah, I bet. When I drove the R34, I said out loud as I left the parking lot, I was like, do not money shift yeah. this vehicle, because <laughs> it is very expensive. Yeah. yeah, the handbrake was trickier than the shifting, actually. 
Oh, I can see I that. Yeah. yeah. Different, Handbrake was trickier. Hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And then after that, did you just say like, hey, I, maybe I'll stick around a little bit? Pretty much, yeah. Um, so that was 2003, and then I did the D1 Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to be the top, I mean, the eight drivers to be qualified, and uh, that got me a couple deals to get a sponsors. Mm -hmm. And then the 2004, the year after, Formula Drift started it. And <clears throat> Jim and Ryan from Formula Drift uh, hit me up and they asked me if I want to drive. And then, of course, I said yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, I got a good amount of sponsors to start competing in Formula Drift. That's incredible. So many yeah. like legends from that first year, too. Like people that have just gone on to like amazing careers. Uh, doing all kinds of different stuff, Tanner and yeah. Sam Hubenet and all and all those guys, and actually it was Ken wasn't Ken Gushi still in two, yes. 2004 too? <clears throat> He's, so Ken is he Gushi, the longest straight longest running? He, he, yeah, him, him and Forsberg and uh, Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was one of them. Uh, yeah, until last year, but right. um, better, bigger, and better things. It's all right. <laughs> I try to follow Reese and Turner. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the Hollywood money. That's where. It, that's where it's yeah. at, right? Well, you. I mean, I read like you raced or you competed on Reese's team. Was that? Oh, oh yeah. Five in a GTO. Oh, 2008. Oh, in a GTO. Yeah, GTO. he's yeah. uh he's old girl. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing how many of those cars get stick around the circuit after right. the drivers are done with them, right? Yeah. Was that a good car? It was a good car, actually. Yeah. Yeah. They th those cars they're kind of bland looking, but they have good balance, don't they? And good and power. It built by you know Reese Millen's team, mm -hmm. and it was very well built back then. Yeah, I uh, that's one of my favorite built actually really? with a car that I've driven. Wonder what happened to it later. I think he sold it to somebody in Canada, uh. and I hope they're still keeping it as is. Is that Viper know. still running? Sam Hubinet's old Viper, I think. Oh. That car must have done at least 10, 12 seasons. <laughs> yeah. That car's done so many seasons. I'm pretty sure one one of them goes to uh, Dean Carney, no? Yeah. Maybe? Oh, right. I is think he's running a Viper. Right. I think it's Sam. If he is, out. it's probably that same car. That would be incredible. Possibly, yeah. That car has had a life. That's wild. So, hmm. were you... When I was when I first discovered YouTube, one of my favorite things in the world was best motoring. Oh. And hot version. Were you influenced by that at all? Were you seeing it at the time? Like was it just on television in Actually, Japan? Actually, I didn't really watch those oh, really? until more recently. I wonder if it was like <clears throat> were what was it part of Japanese car culture or was it just a novelty to us? Americans because there were these guys fucking having the best time ever and <laughs> screaming at each other driving cars that we had like, never seen. I think it is in Japan too. It is. Uh, okay. But uh, like I say, you know, when I was in Japan, I was more like a drifter. Mm -hmm. I didn't do grip driving. Mm -hmm. So for us, I guess yeah, we didn't watch that. Mm -hmm. We watched more like option video. Oh, okay. The, yeah, the drifting type of videos. Yeah. Um, were those early videos cool? Yeah. Yeah. Are they still out there, like on YouTube? Yeah, for sure. What, what should I look for on YouTube if I want to watch like really old Japanese drifting videos? I think Option. I don't know. They have a channel. I don't know if they have the archives. Mm -hmm. But um, I wonder if like GT Channel has that they old. Do. GT they do. Channel GT Channel's got all, all the old yeah. stuff. Okay, I'll dig through the GT Channel archive. <laughs> Best motoring was my shit when yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, cool. That was like that was when I was like, wait, this Skyline thing is like walking away from Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Porsches. Oh, like this is the, the battle. Sh this is yeah, that shit was awesome. The pedal cam. That's how I learned to like. <laughs> that's how I learned to heel toe. It's like the oh, pedal cam. Right? Yeah, and the Senna video of Senna with the uh, NSX. Yeah, if you remember that video, I do. That was how I learned to heel the toe. Nice, yeah. Nice but the shoes. loafers, yeah, and loafers. the white socks. <laughs> it was not. The nineties were not even kind to Senna. I'm unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> So then what was when did you say okay I, drifting it's fun mm -hmm. it's good it's a it's a career I'm here now now I want to try racing what got what what changed your focus to that um I think back in 2010 9 around that time I got to know people from Spoon Sports mm. Spoon is you know Honda tuner legendary like yeah yeah and just became really close with them and then they had an opportunity for me to drive their car and do racing. What were you, what car was it? That was a DC, I'm sorry, uh, 
What do you call that? Integra? FD2 Civic. Oh, the okay. The Civic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was it fun? It was fun. Is, I, is Spoon <clears throat> really as good as everyone? I've never driven one of their cars. Is it as good as everyone says yeah, it is? Yeah. It is? It's not like a high horsepower kind of car, you know? Yeah. It's but it's like revs. Kind of, it's all about the revs, right? Right. So it's kind of same as the the BBL Mines car. Mm -hmm. The same type of philosophy, I would say. The balance mm -hmm. and longevity kind of thing. I... Uh, I mean, I don't know if it was. I don't know if I heard of them before Paul, before Fast and the Furious, like, or if that was really. <laughs> I, it. I hadn't. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wasn't in that world. But that was the yeah. first mention. Yeah. Now it's like now if I see that shit in a car, I'm like, ooh, you know, it's yeah, it's one fast. of the, it's one of the names. It's like just it's you go that's the, that's someone spent real money on that. <laughs> Did you ever? Um, Go visit their like factory or whatever. Where there or is it? What is what is their facility? <laughs> Do they have a factory? What I is it? Just a little shop somewhere. Like it's like a, more like a, you know, their boutique shop, uh -huh. and they have a headquarter. But it's in Tokyo, like kind of expensive area. Uh huh. So you you never really been there, huh? Or you don't know. I anybody. was in Tokyo for five days. It was not nearly long enough. I need oh, to do like a okay. like a month. And I went out to uh, oh, what's the parkway that we filmed on? Very famous road. It's yeah. like a toll road. Starts with a D. Um, the one with the big car shops, right? Daikoku Futo. Maybe. Mm. Uh, I thought you guys went there. It was near where that, um, there's a famous place called Fun to Drive that rents like JDM cars. Fun to Drive. It was like, um, oh Jesus, this is embarrassing. It's <laughs> where all, out, yeah, outside of Tokyo, there's a lot of famous like hot springs. Mm. It was by that area. Oh, Hakone maybe? Hakone. Okay. That's where okay. we were. Yes. And it was amazing. The roads cool, were cool. fucking spectacular. Oh, the, park, the <laughs> Hill Climb Parkway. The Hill Climb Parkway. Right. Hakone. Right. Yeah, that okay, was okay. awesome. Yeah. We rented that road and filmed on it. It was the best. And R34 Skyline, stuff, right. it was delightful with JF and oh, uh, with those guys. Nice, nice. It was so cool. But that was, I need to go spend a lot more time yeah, in Japan. Sure. Yeah, sure. And I if know. you have a time, you should go to Spoon. They have a shop called Type Art. Mm -hmm. And it's inside of Tokyo. It's very, very nice, clean shop. And you can see what they do. Yeah. I could spend a month wandering around Tokyo. <laughs> we literally, can. we picked like a random alley and a random noodle shop, just like uh, that one. And it was and the best noodles good, I've right? ever had in my yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. Just totally random, no knowledge. <laughs> just ordered something in a vending machine. Don't know what it was. It was incredible. I just want to eat my way yeah. through that fucking town. It's so great. It was the coolest. What yeah. is your, do you have, what is your favorite Japanese tuner? If you had to pick one. Favorite Japanese tuner. <laughs> what was the most iconic? Well, uh, I guess Spoon. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, back then, like I said, I don't have, I didn't have money, or yeah. you know, I never had like chance to go visit any other places. So I don't know anybody, but yeah, Spoon and Mines are one, or two of my favorites. Yeah, um, it's a, it's cool when that stuff makes it over here and actually gets, you know raced and, and yeah. competes and. Well, you, didn't you run an endurance race at Thunder Hill with Spoon like two years ago? Actually. Last, last year. year, last year, yeah. Was that this, this twenty-five hour? Yeah, twenty-five yeah. hours. Yeah, in, in this, in the car, in one it of these cars. It was the FK8 Civic. Oh, the, cool. The one, yeah. How did you do? Uh, we won the class. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for doing my homework, right? <laughs> <laughs> that course was, is was it full course? It yeah, is, right. Full course, yeah. That course. No, is, uh, I guess they have the extended version, right? Right. Not, it's not the long full. one. It's not. It's the OG long course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an awesome place to drive a car. It is. What's your favorite racetrack? Um, for drifting, I like Irvingdale. Oh, how come? Because of the big banking? Yeah, it just uh, you know that's the that's a place I debut myself. Uh huh. And that's a place I won. I mean, I I totaled the car my first time in my life, and then I won my first time in my life. No, so it's good, like everything's combined. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Feelings. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun place to watch too. You right, get that's really good thing. visibility. You can see everything from one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's good for the you know fans. to yeah. check it out. Yeah. yeah, the first time you totaled a car in competition, like what's that feeling like? What and what year was that? <laughs> you know, that was a 2004 D1 Grand Prix, and that was the the, the, the car that I drove first time in the states, which was the the show car, the S13. S13 yeah. But it was owned by my friend, and who had the car, 
as a brand new when oh, he was no. high school. Oh no! Yeah, so he had a feeling to it too. Oh no! What a bummer! And when I told the call, he was, uh, you know, he was kind of tearing too. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I bet. Oh my god! So I, I felt really bad, really, really bad. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. What did you do? I just, so just I mean, that's just racing. Say sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, there's nothing. Call I can sponsors do. and be like, yeah. we need some money very <laughs> quickly. Need a, I know this guy, a ten second car. Or had he sponsored you? Like, was he letting you borrow the car? Or was he, well, he was sponsored. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, he got another car right away, which was right-hand drive, and swapped everything over. Uh, oh, wow. Did, did you instantly become better at racing when you had a right-hand drive <laughs> I car? I think I did. <laughs> like, I know what we, we can crashing. do here. <laughs> yeah. There's no, is there any uh, ruling in Formula Drift if you want to go right-hand drive or left-hand drive? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. There's as no as, rule. Yeah, right? as long as you meet the, uh, the tech right, the right, safety right. route. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. What about for road racing? What's your favorite uh, circuit? Road racing, uh, Baton Willow. No, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> I'm very local. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really do too many tracks mm-hmm. in my life, so. Baton Willow is fun. Yeah, it's a very fun track to drive. Yeah, good, good, good mix of yeah. fast and slow sections. I like Baton Willow actually. Didn't yeah. they just repave it? Do they read just re- they just they repave streets? Streets is awesome now. Yeah. Have you driven? Oh, you were there for on GTR day after they repaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The That's repaved right. streets of Willow is awesome. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> it's so much smoother. Oh, it's so nice yeah. over there now. I love that track. I did GT4 RS on that track too, and it was mm. badass. I don't like Big Willow at all. Do you like Big Willow? No, That's same here. Terrible. That's a horsepower track. But if you want to drive, you gotta be pretty. You know, balls out. Yeah. To like, Eight and if nine. you and it's not it's not a track that's really about skill. It's about grip and bravery. That's yeah, pretty much yeah. it, you know. I and agree. oh by the way, if either of those runs out, you are fucked. <laughs> yeah. You're having a bad day. There's yeah. no such thing as a little crash there. True. You're having a big crash at that track. Too much speed. Yeah. 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 And then and like boulders everywhere and holes. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. Yeah. History. Okay, fine. But can we pave this thing a little bit? <laughs> like, yeah. It eats tires too. Right. It really goes yeah. The turn three feels like uh, Big Tahunga before they paved it. It's right. You know. Yeah. Do you do a lot of like uh, canyon road driving? Do you get out and for fun, or are you always just working? Not much recently. But here and there, yes, I mm-hmm. do. Just like morning drive with a friend. Yeah. Do you, you still know. enjoy that stuff, or do you need I to do. be competing? I do. You do? I definitely do, yeah. And what do you take, your your uh, Hachi street car? A- yeah, A86. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hachi. Is that, what do you what do you drive every day? What's your normal car? Uh, you you brought drive. a Tesla here today. That's my wife's car. Okay. Uh, because wife is in Japan right now, I'm using that, but... Um, Usually I drive Silverado. Oh, <laughs> all right. Truck. Well, you need a truck. Racing <laughs> driver needs a truck. I get it. Yeah. No hate against. Do you like the Tesla too for for every day? Yeah, for daily driver, mm-hmm. I think it's great. But the range is not enough for my driving. Yeah. My wife only goes to like a local, so right. it's enough. But for me, it's gonna be. Yeah. I need a little bit more longer range. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and with the, um, <clears throat> what did, um, you know, other than obvious, to go back to your the Pikes Peak thing, because it's the same Tesla Model 3, mm-hmm. how how crazy is the Model 3 Pikes Peak race car compared to, you know, the one you're driving on the street? Actually, it's not the major difference mm-hmm. because we can't really change the power unit, right? So right. the power is, I mean, my wife's car is a, uh, uh, base model right. so it's not a performance but uh, compared to the performance stock um i don't think lap time will be like that much difference let's say mm. if, I, if i if we take it to the evasive models three and the stock model three to the bottom wheel mm-hmm. i think maybe lap time difference might be two three seconds oh, at the most wow yeah. okay yeah that's closer than i would have thought right yeah because the power is limiting everything. sure but the handling was it's really really good mm-hmm the, how they did the you know suspension setup and the aero setup, it works really good. Cool. Do they have to upgrade the cooling system and all that stuff that as well too, yeah. to manage that? Okay. Yeah. But it's not like what um, Unplug does. It's not like radiators and fans. It's like they just put fins on stuff. They just make mm. everything like you know like the fins of like an air cooled Harley right. engine. They they make everything like these fins. So they use the existing heat exchanging systems. They mm-hmm. just add. They just make them better. Surface area to it. Yeah, okay. and they make them out of like better better metal that like uh, radiates heat better and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not like a pump 
that like sends coolant around. It's like a kind of a different thing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I want to ask what. So this is something JF said, so you can correct me. But like hmm. when you won Pike's Peak, it was like in the newspapers in Japan. Like it, it seems like hill climbs there, at least anecdotally, are much more respected and celebrated than they are here. Like Pike's Peak here is a very small motorsport. Mm. Like, is that true? <clears throat> and if so, why is that? Like what drew you to it and why is it so appreciated? Um, I think, yeah, the, not just the hill climb. I mean, not hill climb, it just uh, Pike's Peak has a, such a big name from okay. like 80s and 90s in Japan. So it was on the newspaper, but it's only for the certain people. It's still not as big as like, it sh- should be yeah, in yeah. Japan too. Is yeah. it big from the 80s and 90s? Is that like because of Monster Tajima? Or was it just there were more competitors and it, it grabs people's attention? I think so, yeah. I think it's more because of the Monster Tajima. And I think back then there's a lot of like rally drivers. Uh-huh. And, you know, it was more like, I don't know. Um, you it think when it was more of a rally versus now where it's kind right. of the, the paved? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's no internet, so it was really hard to get all the information. So, oh, okay. Mm, yeah, I feel like um, they still need to work on that. There's no, <laughs> yeah, there still do. isn't internet at Pike Peak. <laughs> yeah, <actually. laughs> yeah, that's well, yeah, true. Two cameras down, but we still have two going. Yeah. So here's the start line. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Pike Peak. We just need help with that. Um, all right, so whatever it was in the '90s, it just that grabbed people's attention, and it yeah, just and this still carries respect. on that certain people in Japan. Mm-hmm. I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. What is like? What is your your dream career? I mean, you've done Formula D. You're now doing some road racing. Is it, you know, just every you know? Now you're doing some car review stuff on on YouTube <laughs> and some street cars and and working with Zach for some shows. Like, yeah. where do you, what does the future look like for for Dai? I would like to ask you guys, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> you want to park cars downstairs? I and mean, we're always hiring. Dai has his <laughs> resume with him. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a tough one. I, I just want to keep doing what I do, which is drive cars. Mm-hmm. But I know the fact that I'm not young enough to like challenge new like road racing or try to be like F1 driver or something, you know. But I already retired professional dri- uh, drifting. Um, so I don't know like I what. I do you have like do. an open wheel? Dri- like if someone said we want you to test our open wheel car, like. Are you, is that something you're interested in? <laughs> I would be interested, but yeah. I don't think I can be quick enough right away. Yeah. Because that's Have you tried like, before? I have never driven the open wheel. Yeah. That's, that's a different like, thing, man. Right? Have you? Di- yeah, but it's different for me because, like, I don't fit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like a terrible experience for me. Oh. It's like, it's not, if I fit in the car and was able to, like, move properly, yeah. I might like it more than I've, like, I've tried a couple, like, closed cockpit like prototype style mm. race cars and those are really fun for me so if I, but but I fit in the car so that's that's where I start from mm. if I don't fit it's like terrible but I think you'd probably enjoy it but yeah you, I, I understand you can't move you yeah, can't what are you, what are you supposed to do you can't really you can't yeah, drive do, do well. yeah 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 no my dream is to be formula drift but it's not gonna <laughs> fucking happen at this point <laughs> One day, yeah. I think Zach and I are going to try and build yes. a Project Drift car oh, event- cool. eventually. As soon as we have the second parking situation. When we have a, yeah, my, when we open our new building and I have a truck and trailer, yeah. then we'll have somewhere to keep it and oh, get, no. it to the, get it to the track. A drift missile. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Might you have to be a Fox me body. For that. <laughs> as long as it works. As long as, yeah. 350Z, Fox body. Yeah, we'll care. need you to come fine tune it for yeah. us. Yeah. That'd be dope. I would love to have a Hachi, but I don't think, I think they're too expensive now. I think so. True. Yeah. yeah. Especially, t- yeah, for the... Uh, um, the practice to use one for a track to, yeah as a missile no if yeah. you were going to build a drift missile right now what would you build um, let's say let's say eight thousand dollars i had 10 because everything's inflated maybe yeah 350z yeah that seems oh, to be the, what everybody's uh, the doing infinity the same generation g35 mm-hmm. yeah yeah those yeah. are the, the best bet i guess yeah i like a g35 actually mm-hmm. i like yeah. that one those things were sweet when they were new yeah yeah, I like that. All the Goombas, all the fucking Italians by me had them <laughs> with the forged wheels. They all had to get the one with the optional forged wheels. That's that's those are actually really nice. They're very nice. The yeah. seats are great. They were. They were really I don't think good. they qualify for the track. Though, no, you move around a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's the three fifty Z that no one thinks about. But I just wanted to point out, oh like, my your, God, look at your, your time fucking... attack credits are huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for someone that's not really known for time attack, you have a serious, <laughs> serious 
Podium, podium. Oh, Super Trofeo. That's nice. That's Oh, in 2019, Huracan Super Trofeo, not yeah, even yeah. Gallardo. <laughs> Those things are fun as hell to drive, aren't they? <laughs> it is, but it was hard for me. Why is that? I don't know. It, it's very hard for me to get used to. Um, in fact, I don't think I ever had the you know best out of it yet. Really? Yeah. What's so hard about it? Because I I think I don't I don't personally. I mean, I'm not racing them. I just got a test, but I don't mm. think that's that hard of a car to drive. What did you find so difficult about it? It's um, to me, I couldn't feel what the car was doing mm. as easy as uh, you know other cars that I've been driving driving on the competition. Um, I know it's a factory Lamborghini built race car. Yeah, uh, it's fast. You know, it's got a lot of powers, but I just couldn't feel, I didn't get good feedback. I don't know, maybe the okay. the team I was driving for didn't really have a right setup, maybe, uh -huh. possibly. I don't know. Wait, but did you get second place and it's, then fifth place? It's in the class. So okay. this is like a, um, the cup, I mean, the, what do you call that? Like, you know, cup, cup series, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, what do you call those things? Spec series? Spec series. Yeah, yeah. But there's a different classes. And then I was driving for one of my uh, friends, you know, who has a money, basically. Right. So the uh, trade is I didn't really have a chance to drive that often. Mm. Like he's a main driver, and then I'm just jumping in whenever he needs me, right? Um, I know what that means. You, you know what, yeah. <laughs> That's another reason why I didn't really get to, you know, yeah, know yeah, the car yeah. that well. But, yeah. but I guess I was just saying, like, you're like, I didn't really get to know the car well, and I look up and I see second place. I'm like, yeah, you clearly didn't figure and it then, out. And then, yeah, the, <laughs> I tried to explain it was that there's a three, four different classes. Okay. But using the same car. car. Got it. And oh, that's we're interesting. In the, like, a, you know, the lowest class. Oh, right, okay. right, right, right. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The So you've drawn rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Uh, I still like the rear wheel drive. Okay. Yeah. Because you seem like you've got lots of lots of success in front wheel drive uh, racing as well. I do like front wheel drive as well. Um, different different challenges. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> it's always fun to drive different type of platform. Mm -hmm. It's always new, right? Um, and the, depending on the the uh, the track or. Like especially like Pike Speak, maybe front wheel drive might do well. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking. Who's who was anyone racing? Uh, who who had a good front wheel drive car this year? Uh, the Will. Oh, Will. Yeah, well, Will. He had a, yeah, unfortunately, he had a, unfortunately a crash, but yeah. he's really fast at, yeah, at uh, Time fast. Attack. Yeah, and who's that? Oh, I'm gonna blank on his name. That lunatic with the Integra, James. Integra. Integra. Uh, he's a grid life guy, James. Something, oh, the 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 I think it's K tuned. Oh, the, you know what I'm talking about? He has like an 800 horsepower Integra that eats gearboxes every 20 minutes. <laughs> a team approach. Uh, maybe. I'll, I'll pull a picture up because it's um, amazing. He's out of his mind, and the car is like so fast that it eats itself. And it's the I believe it's K tuned. Yep, oh, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, James, James. Yes, James. Sorry, sorry. James. I, I forget his last name, but he was fun as fuck, and the car is crazy, <laughs> and uh, he sets a lot of records at Grid Life. He put the fastest down, fastest time any Grid Life competitor has ever attained at Road Atlanta. Oh, wow. I was there when he did that. He ran. I think he beat. He beat like a like a cup car. Like I think he ran. Whoa. I want to say. Can you can you go down and see what the time was? Um, I don't know if they if they showed the time, but the Road Atlanta? it was a time at Road Atlanta. It was a time that was so fast I didn't actually believe it. Like it was. I, I, I don't. I don't want to say the wrong time, but it was absolutely crazy. I think those guys go like one twenty ish. It was. I think it was a. I think it was like a twenty or twenty one. Something like that, right? Yeah, it, in a fucking Integra. It I was, know it, Will did one nineteen. Oh, the, so <laughs> maybe he went quicker crazy. afterwards. This yeah. was like a few years ago. But yeah, I think a Will went faster. It was absolutely than him after. Uh, not quite overall to capture the overall front wheel drive track record, but yeah, either way, he was crazy. Yeah, from fa really fast front wheel drive is very tough. Yeah, so those are like next level type of cars. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying generally, like front wheel car, front wheel yeah. drive cars are fun to drive too. Yeah, they are. Yeah, especially like high revving. You know, right. Those the re a really well set up Civic is like yeah excellent yeah uh, in 2016 James ran a 124 34 yeah which is three seconds faster than uh, 
his 2016 time mm. um and it broke broke a record that was previously set by chris rado of 125 oh yeah and that was a that record stood for five years yeah so, so that was front wheel drive record yeah that must have been it yeah crazy so since you get to do some streetcar stuff for for video and whatever mm. what do you what do you like in streetcars right now anything impress you about the current generation of sports current cars generation mm. i don't really have that much uh not you know experience like you guys do but uh i was pretty amazed by the new 86 or the new BRZ. Uh huh. The difference between the previous model. Yeah, they've done a good job, yeah. right? Yeah. No more torque dip. Yeah. <laughs> they, they improved that a lot. Right, yeah. I just got to drive the cup car, the race car. Oh, yeah, I Fucking saw that. awesome. It was great. Seemed really like fun. It, huh? Yeah, it was light, fast, sequential, Sedev, sequential gearbox. Wow. Really fun. Yeah, easy, easy to How drive. How much hose? You know, stock. I mean, it's a stock engine, but so 228, but it has a uh, Bosch Motorsport engine management, mm. no cats, and it runs on race gas. So, I mean, maybe two, 240. So a little bit quicker. A than little, the a little version. bit quicker. Yeah, but slicks, lots of grip, big um, Alcon brakes. Mm. You know, um, and it was it was great. Wow. It was as, exactly as fun as you think it would be. Wow. Yeah, it was really, really Are cool. they going to be available next year? For purchase, yeah. Are so they... they're doing a spec series, so 35 cars uh, for the spec series, and then you'll be able to buy them for a track day toy. 125000 hmm. out the door. One twenty. Okay. I mean, it's not that bad, actually, <laughs> for a factory you know, race car. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, with some factory support. Um, it's pretty cool. Zach, do we have anything on the Patreon? Yep, we do. We uh, have our Oop. Patreon if you... Want to ask questions of our guests if you want to have an ad-free listening experience and if you want to get the show before other people, patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll go with one specifically for Die first. Derek says, Die, uh, funny or embarrassing stories about Zach for your from your time together. <laughs> We shot a show called Rated for people that are listening that don't know. Yeah, so we shot six episodes, I think. Uh, I would do road car reviews, and then Di would do the track review with me riding right seat. Do we have any embarrassing moments? Zach, break anything? I, well, I mean, I almost spun a Lotus because I forgot. Did you? Yeah, but you weren't in the car. I, no one saw it. It was just, <laughs> oh, you know, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> uh, that's true. I think, in fact, I spun the Rotus. Yeah, you did. Well, you, were, <laughs> you were sitting with me, right? Yeah, and you spun... Was that a Vora GT? Yeah, Vora, Vora GT right, with right, full tires, yeah. off-camber situation. The nice car, though. That car was uh, one of kind. Yeah, they're yeah. cool. <laughs> I couldn't... Yeah, I still don't know how to explain how to feel about the well, car. I remember you, you... I remember we were going around the track, and you were like, it's soft, but precise. Like, it rides well, but it's also, like doing what I want and you're like I don't understand <laughs> yeah. it feels like a floating or something yeah, but, yeah. yeah. but still sticky because all the other cars we had they were like really firm like the M3 and whatnot right yeah because it's light and has a rigid bonded aluminum chassis so it can have good soft shocks mm. yeah the that's air, a Lotus the aerial thing Adam. remember the aerial Adam yeah that yeah. thing was insane you were just you were like I can't even talk right now because it was just so bonkers <laughs> those things are sketchy man yeah. aren't they it can be they're yeah. hairy right and Which yeah. one was it? The three, the supercharged one. It was a new one. Yeah, yeah. it was a turbocharged one. Yeah, with the Honda uh, K Series engine. They're insane. Yeah, it took uh, I don't know two tries for you to figure out how to slide it, and then you were like, oh, okay, and then <laughs> of course it was just over. Just yeah, yeah. fun car, nothing crazy. Uh, Brandon says, "Die, what is the best or worst thing that changed about competing in Formula Drift during your time?" Best and worst. Yeah, what over the course of your career, what what really what major changes happened during the series that affected you? Formula drift. Yeah, like you know, rule changes. Oh. Like they changed it every year. That's a tough one. I don't know. I can't really have anything on top of my head. <laughs> what was the good thing? What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh... Uh, what are they added? Recently? I mean, I it never really like followed rules. the specific rule changes that carefully, so it's tough for me to say. Oh, so I, he's asking specifically about the rule. I don't know. He changed about uh, the things that changed about competing. So mm. could be rules, could did, be power, could be, could be. Did did uh, 
once what about like competing in originally against some of the earlier guys versus competing later against people who grew up with that series being a thing hmm. you know what i mean I mean, you know, they keep changing the rules and trying to make it better and better every year, mm -hmm. every day. So, yeah, like it's a big difference from like 10 years ago and today. What would be the best thing? I don't know. <laughs> when they when the cars cuz the, the the cars now probably make double the power they made in 2004, right? right? Is that good? It's good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. Um so one of the things they do, they uh strict the the practice uh, they can only do 12 practice prior to competition. Okay. Versus before, like, as much as you can within the time. Mm -hmm. But the, the reason why they did that is the tires, because they eat so much tires, so mm -hmm. now the cars has so much power. So pretty much one lap, uh, you eat one tire. So two laps, you can only do two laps for the one set of the tire. Sure. So, yeah, that's one thing they did. It's good or bad. It's more equal to everybody. So, you know, who has more tire, or not doesn't yeah, really you have can't it. just yeah right, you can't just unlimited tire budget right right, right. right. that's right. because of the power change I yeah think. that makes sense yeah that makes sense uh my garage bay how crazy or fun would it be to have a formula drift event at pike's peak that sounds like a toge <laughs> oh yeah that'd be great but uh road <laughs> course <laughs> street co street course risky. Formula D seems dangerous. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it'll be cool, but it, yeah, I don't think it can happen. Yeah, yeah the too. cars the cars would only make it like four or five corners up on a set of tires, <laughs> yeah, so they blow yeah. all their tires. Right. Yeah. yeah. I saw what you know um, when Tanner was at Laguna Seca, he could only make it. He was doing demo laps with his oh, Passat. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. But he could only do like three corners. And then he would have to cool down the tires, and then he could do three more corners. But the car, he couldn't even do a whole lap around mm -hmm. Laguna. The car just not set up for that with that kind of power. So it would be, right. it would be tough. Uh, Jim Eldridge says, do you have a particular favorite drift car build from the 90s or 2000s? Specific D1 cars. Oh, like some like a known car? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, I like the... Green um, S15 from D1, which was driven by Kazama. Uh, it's a K Office S15. Maybe you can. Google I'm sure it. we can. I'm sure we could find it. Yeah, S15s are very pretty. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm pretty eat. sure you have seen that too. Uh, is it? A, it's a very famous car. It was at the time. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I know that car. Yeah, that car is still like around somewhere. I think someone bought it or something. I've maybe? seen it at like maybe at SEMA <laughs> or something. I've seen really? it around. Yeah, it's Man. a famous car. S15 is so pretty. Yeah, it is so pretty and yeah. it's covered in stickers. This seems uh, really fun to drive. Yeah. Back in the day. So, yeah, I wanted to cool. kind of look it up at the yeah. time. Those Canadian guys built that S15 that I drove that was really, right. really cool. Yeah. Very tough to drive. It only made power from six to 9,000 RPM. 2J, it, right? It was a 2J with a monster turbo on it. And it should have been twins, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like twins. I don't like the big singles. Hmm. Um, let's see. Doug G says, if you could own one race car from any driver, what would it be? Money, no object, just one. One race car from any driver. Mm. Um, I like the uh, Group A GTR. Mm -hmm. Carsonic. Yeah. R32. Legendary car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just. That car looks so cool. So fast, it got banned from racing. Is that right? Yeah, it got. Oh. It was. It was. It. They. They banned those cars. They just ran that car at Goodwood though. Festival of Speed. Oh shoot! A guy just drove that. it up the hill, oh. and was, it was really this cool. This one that got banned from um, Calsonic, Australia racing. Uh, it was touring car or yeah, it was banned from something. Hmm. Yeah, legendary car. Yeah. Yeah. This one, looks awesome. something about it. That yeah. does. Yeah. Look at the sidewall. So much sidewall. Right? That's a, that's a cool. So car. you see the HK's version right there. I had a chance to drive that one. Last oh really? Year. Yeah. Was it awesome? It was. Yeah. Just to you know be able to drive was great. Mm -hmm. But I can tell it was not an easy car to drive. It's like you know very, you know raw, mm -hmm. old school. You know everything's like very. Your brake is not easy to brake. Everything is like super raw. So it's yeah. very like you have to be a good driver to be able to go fast. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If I, I would probably have. The McLaren F1, 
that Justin Bell drove at Le Mans oh. in 1995. Oh, man. Which is a short tail, not a long tail. Uh, McLaren F1 LM. I, I think that's probably the, the right move. Zach, mm. one race car? Uh, GT40 driven by oh, there you um, go. GT40. Ken Miles. Ken Miles GT40. Yeah, okay. That's a that's a that's a winner. Um oh Aiden Squires uh just says love seeing die up close when everyone came down the mountain for the parade. Um mm. Christian says oh sorry, uh Chris Navio said um a most mostly stock nine nine two Turbo S lightweight got second at Pikes Peak this year. Do you think <laughs> the Turbo S will be a staple for all future hill climb events? Um yeah, mm. good. It was a good car for Pikes Peak. Reliable, very fast. Yeah, and when the fog was there, it had factory defroster and good windshield wipers. Is that is that reason why that the it goes faster than most of other modified Porsche? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. It, it has a good all wheel drive system, mm. good dual clutch gearbox, mm-hmm. um, tires that weren't so aggressive that when it was cold and wet, you could still go fast. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like. With those cars, you know, Porsche spends so much time uh, with hot weather testing, cold weather testing, development, computing, all that stuff to build the car to be able to do as much as possible in every condition. Mm. And when you start to modify it in a crazy way, like you, you narrow know, the focus, Joey, you, exactly, you narrow the conditions it will be perfect in. And yeah, the second true. it rains or fogs up, it's like, oh, this is what I built it for. For sure. Uh, side note: Do you think the GT2 RS will have the all-wheel drive system the Turbo does? No. The GT2 RS uh, GT cars are not all-wheel drive. Mm. They will. That's a Porsche thing. They will always be rear-wheel drive. What do you think about the, the classes in general? Because we, something we we heard from a lot of grumbling in the paddock this year was the classes seem kind of broad. So you'll have a 1500 horsepower modified car in the same class as a 700 horsepower modified car. Because they have d- two different engines, it just it seems yeah. like there's a lot of mismatching, and because they lump them under one category. Yeah, you, I agree with you. Um, the cl- class in Pike Speak is kind of uh, messed up, but also in a way, it's kind of beauty of that race too. It's like uh, um, you know, Pike Speak when you when you go there, you you see it like it's very. Uh, uh, grassroots, mm-hmm. you know, you see like professional team, but also like, you know, guys just built the car by by himself. Yeah, and, and they kind of like mixed up together and then competing each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I yeah, it's hard to tell, but to me, it's like uh, it's kind of fucked up. The the <laughs> classification is not really like equal, but at the same time, that's kind of beauty of the Pike Speak. You know, yeah. Right? I, did, I think that just they should have an EV class. Besides that, I, I don't, you know, who cares? It's just how the people you practice with. Besides that, like whatever. That's true. Uh, yeah, I think you're running for your time until it's like, are you trying to win a class? And I yeah. think if someone in your class has 500 more horsepower than you, then maybe they could do horsepower mm. classes. But then, you know, you divide it too much. Like the attendance is only so big. So I understand it's challenging to yeah. figure that out. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I, I take it as more like you know. Uh, be, uh, battling yourself. That's why you know I was more like care about like my my time, not just you know other people. Yeah. Because especially like that uh, GT2 was in my class, so he won the exhibition first place, and then <laughs> I was like second. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think we we're gonna go on to the podium because yeah, yeah. it's a totally different car. But yeah. they did the uh, yeah our ceremony, and I was supposed to be on the podium. <laughs> and it's weird because like that <clears> car was like. You know, stock body, you know, mostly stock powertrain, really just a hundred octane tune and, and nothing else. And your mm. car's got this crazy aero right. and it's electric. Like, how are the, how are how is this the class? <laughs> like, I don't. It doesn't. You know, it's weird. But yeah, I see your point. Um, Christian uh, says uh, advice for planning a trip to the Nurburgring: where to rent a car to drive to the track, fun cities to visit in Germany. Um, been to the Nurburgring? Nope. You really? I would love to. Oh yeah, you got to go. It's fun. It's neat. I mean, even just to hang out there, it's kind of like you should run uh, the uh, endurance class there with Spoon. Just tell tell Spoon to do that, <laughs> and then go. Um, That'd be dope. Renting a car to drive to the track and renting a car to drive on the track not the same thing. Most German rental cars will not be happy if you drive them on the fucking Nurburgring. Oh. Um, Sixth in Germany has really nice cars. Actually, I rented a, a Audi. S7 
um, they had some like they have like Porsches and they have like nice stuff you can rent for a German road trip um, and they're just like at the airport so I would book a car through Sixth um, when you get to the Nurburgring um, RSR Nurburg was the company that I worked with um, and there's like three or four different companies that rent race cars and track mm. cars they have a cage they'll have good tires and good brakes um, and they'll charge you, you know, I don't know if it's per lap or per afternoon or whatever, I forget. And it'll come with a lapping package. In, they have instructors. They'll teach you, like, literally the basics. Like, here's where you line up. Here's where you pay your money. So you don't look like a complete idiot, you know, when you're out there. And you can get insurance for the track, that kind of stuff. Um, I liked RSR Nurburg. I thought they were great people and they had nice cars. Um, and then the Piston Klasse is this hotel that's not particularly fancy, but Sabina Schmitz's uh, family owns it. It was like where she grew up. And they have a very famous restaurant underneath the hotel that's like an underground thing that's got like pictures of all the legendary racing drivers and stuff. And then you can drive through the manufacturer's row where like GM and Pro Drive and Aston Martin and Ferrari and like they all have their like areas like their warehouse shops and they're just driving around camouflage prototypes and it's pretty cool just hanging out there oh. yeah so that those are good things um and derek says uh new patreon tier level matt's book club that's an interesting option um and uh one podcast per month is we're trying to figure out what to do with the patreon to take it to the next level i don't does that mean i don't know if that means i send out the books which i don't really want to do it's kind of worded like that maybe you have to get your own book yeah um, have to find their own book but it's not a terrible idea and i read one book a month so we could probably do that i could do a, maybe a book club that could be fun um die thanks a lot for coming in i really appreciate your no, time thank you for having me making the drive um you will. Uh, are you going to Pebble Beach? Is that your scene or no? Actually, I'm going for one day. What are you, what are you doing for one day? <laughs> My 86 is there. The oh. ja Japanese show, uh, the motor train does. I don't oh, know. I forgot. Oh, the name of that. oh yep. is that yep. Myron's thing? Was he promoting that? My friend Myron yes, Vernis is doing the, is a crazy Japanese car enthusiast. Um, JG something, I forgot. But. I want to see this. Wait, it's uh, Japanese Automotive Invitational. J A I J A I yeah yeah that one yeah oh okay cool <laughs> that why the the race car is yeah up there? wide body one oh cool what day is that uh the car will be there I think Thursday through all weekend oh but cool I'll be there Thursday only oh all right yeah. I'm going up Thursday as well maybe I can make it before they close cool. yeah I'll try to I wanted to check that out our friend is in, in charge of promoting that okay um cool that's awesome all right so if you're going to Monterey check out uh, Dai's car up at the uh, Japanese something invitational <laughs> jai the jai is that on is it on the schedule yeah i'm trying to that's, that stinks whatever that what's up monterey.com schedule is is oh, not good not, in it? not there no that's right, weak yeah. where well, you just had it though wherever it was before um cool that'll be fun you tell you flying up yeah flying right. up Wah, wah. <laughs> you catch a ride with me in the old black car. <laughs> you gonna drive that car all the way? Fuck yeah, dude! Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm not a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm a bitch. <laughs> You've, is that? Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that oh, Mugen that CRX. That car was at the Honda Museum. Have you all been right. to that Honda? The Honda Museum is really cool. In yeah, some, where? In Torrance. They might have moved it. Did they oh, move it? Oh, really? They might have moved it, but it was in Torrance, and they had that that Mugen CRX mm. and a bunch of other crazy Japanese tuner cars. So Japanese uh, Automotive Invitational is going to be August 18 to 21 during Car Week. All right. We will check that out. Thank you very much. I will uh, see you all when I get back from Pebble Beach. Dai. Follow him on Instagram, Dai mm -hmm. Yoshihara. No punctuation, just like his name. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, guys.